Let's start out with just by writing down the equations that we have. That way we can we can write down what we know, we can look at the graphs, see what we know, and then we can choose from there. So equations that we have, by the way, I'm not going to write down all the equations because this graph is a what? Cosine. So I'm going to write down things that go with the cosine. Uh, you got x of t equals x naught cosine omega t plus phi, and lots of times you will find phi is zero. Phi is, phi is the phase shift. This is a normal cosine graph, meaning, um, well, not completely normal, but the omega is going to be slightly different, but there is no phase shift here. In other words, it's not slid left or right. Phi takes the entire thing and slides it left, or takes the entire thing and slides it right. And this starts up there, it's maximum that goes, right? So there, there is no phase shift here in this one. We can go ahead and figure that out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's what phi here would be, right? I, I, could, I could put a plus 0.2, right? If I did a plus 0.2 on this, I'd take this entire graph and I'd slide it backwards 0.2. And so the start point would be negative point two, which you kind of put it in between. It'd be a weird thing. Okay. Um, the velocity version here, velocity is yes. Uh, I was going to ask this: Would angular frequency frequency this graph would be two? How'd you get it? It's a well, the angular frequency is two pi over t, and since it's pi, it would just be two. Good. Yes, that's exactly what I did here. That's good. Okay, um, I'm going to use the velocity equation if I'm thinking about this. The velocity equation that goes with that cosine is negative, and I need an x naught on an x, negative x naught omega sine omega t plus phi. Remember, you, you go vertically down in your packet with them. Those two live as a pair. If you start out with a sine graph, you would use that, you know, x equals x naught sine omega t plus phi. It's partner for velocity is the cosine, okay? Those guys go in pairs. You cannot mix those up, right? Um, other equations that we have, V max. What does maximum velocity equal? Anybody remember that? Omega naught, not x naught. Omega x naught. My, my, I know I put omega naught in there when I was, you know, brain part. Omega naught, omega blah, 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 right? Um, so yes, good. Omega times x naught is going to be V max. What is acceleration equal to? Good. Negative omega squared x. So there's some equations that we can use here to try to solve for whatever we want. Okay. A Just A. If I was doing A maximal, I mean, let's talk about that. A max. Where in, let's say, a pendulum swinging back and forth or anything like that, at what point in time is the acceleration at its maximum? When x, when x, the displacement is zero, or whenever it's it's amplitude, x naught. When it's at its amplitude, when it's farthest away, right? I mean, that, that even makes sense mathematically here. This would be negative omega squared x naught to get a max, right? That, that even makes sense just mathematically. And how would you maximize a? Well, you make x as big as you can. All right, so using these equations, let's see what I can do. The maximum acceleration of the particle. Well, I mean, here we go. This is just going to be A equals negative omega squared X, right? Specifically, X naught, right? That's where the maximum acceleration occurs, is at, at the end points or the maximum displacements at the amplitude, all right? And, and as Drew had pointed out, we need omega, right? Um, here's how you get omega from graphs. By the way, this is how you're going to get omega from pretty much every time you have a graph. All right? Look on the graph and find the period. Now, whenever we get 4.5, you're not going to have displacement time graphs. You're also going to have displacement distance graphs. Be very careful that it's a displacement time graph you get period from. Period is a time, right? Period is an amount of time, right? Period is an amount of time, so it has to be a displacement time graph to give you that. So there's my period, and uh, yeah, that, that's pi, right? So as Drew pointed out, a is going to equal negative, right? And this is 2 pi over t 
squared x naught, so a equals negative 2 pi over pi x naught, so a is going to equal negative 2 squared times 3.5. Right? So a is going to equal negative 4 times 3.5. Yeah? Do you square it and then add the negative sign, or do you square it? Square it then add the negative sign. Because uh, the parentheses squared and the negatives out in front of the parentheses. If yeah, it's inside the parentheses, you'd be squaring the negative. And then squaring negative two, two, right? Which we can't do everything out with the points. All right. So uh, what what does a come out to be? A max, sorry, 3.5 times 14. Negative 14 unit. Need it for acceleration? Okay. M S negative 2. All right, so there's A max. There's the answer to number one. Number two, the maximum velocity of the particle. What equation do you want me to use? Yeah, I mean, here we go. Right up here, right? This makes it this makes it insanely simple. We have an equation for V max. Remember, we got this equation from uh, from that one over there. So we got that equation from that one over there. Right? Um, so this this is V max equals two times three point five, right? And that, that's simple, right? V max is going to be what? Seven unit, please. Meters per second. Get that back over there. Yeah. Okay. Questions about those two? The entire trick to those two problems was to use the graph to figure out the period and then use the period to figure out the length. That's the entire trick. Okay. Right. How did you get 2 pi? Like 2 pi over pi. How did I get this part right here? 2 pi over t? Uh, that's what omega is. Omega equals... Um, oh, yeah. 2 pi. Right. Yeah, equations. Omega equals 2 pi f. By the way, you're going to see, to get things into angular, um, if you'll see later on, because it's going to go to college, you multiply by, by the radius. Um, in some cases, in other cases, you'll multiply by 2 pi. Okay. So to go from frequency to angular frequency, you just 2 pi times frequency, or the angular frequency. Um, but that's also, remember, frequency is 1 over the period. They're inverses of each other, so this becomes 2 pi over t. Kim? Okay. Yeah, I think that's Sort of. Um, frequency is how many times it goes around in one second. Okay. Um, angular frequency is how many times it's going to go around the circle. It, it adds in the circular component to it in a mathematical way. Okay. Now I just want to leave it there conceptually. I, I know that's very vague. I understand that's very vague. But I want to purposefully leave it there, and I don't want you to think too much about it. You're going to get, you're going to end up tripping yourself. Okay. Um, so let me leave it there. Well, they ask if the definition for that. No. no. The only thing you would have to know is it's 2 pi out. Right? And the meaning of that, 2 pi times the frequency, would be the angular frequency. So, now, so I'm saying, like, are any of these definitions possibly going to be If it's a standard, then yeah. Just look at both. Right? Okay. Um, next, three. No graphs here. Let me get rid of this stuff so I got rid of it. Um, Three, a pendulum with string length 1.3 meters has a max acceleration of 3.9 meters per second squared. At what times will it have a maximum acceleration? All right, so a pendulum with string length of 1.3 meters has a maximum acceleration of 3.9 meters per second squared. At what time could the pendulum have its max acceleration? I'm writing things down for this. 
3 here, right? I've got L equals 1.3 meters. I got A max, and by the way, your maximum acceleration happens when? At what location is your maximum acceleration? X naught. Good. This happens at X naught, if you will. And I'm going to make a note of that because I got a lot of that in my head. That's happening at X naught. Right? It's going to equal 3.9 meters per second squared. I'm looking for times that occurs. You assume that it's not as important as um, nope. I'm not going to pull it. I'm not going to pull the displacement all the way back to the entire length of the string. For example, the length of this string is, you know, um, up here, what, two meters approximately. But you know, I, I definitely will pull it back two meters, right? That that would be a problem. Back to the pendulums, which you're going to find lots of times whenever we're talking about how far to pull it back, we don't even talk about the length that you pull it back. We talk about the angle that you pull it back, the angle that you pull it back. And this problem doesn't matter. Um, you have an equation that once you solve for omega of a pendulum, okay, uh, and we briefly went over this in your lab, it's about it. what's the equation for angular frequency of a pendulum? Yes, that, that's in there. The square root of L over G, something out in front. Too hot. Assume that it's a small angle. But that's not given. Oh. I'm sorry. You're, you can assume whatever we're talking about pendulums here that we're going to use small. Okay. Lauren, was there another question? Yeah. Let me double check. All right. Yes. Spirit. Okay. That's period. I apologize for giving incorrect things. Uh, Drew and everyone else, you were just giving exactly what I told you. Okay. Um, so y'all are were, were telling, y'all are just following me in my ear and ways. Um, sorry for that. Thank, thank you for going this out. Um, if this is the period, right? Omega equals 2 pi over t. Right? Meaning omega is going to be square root of g over l. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Two pi's go away and you gotta take the inverse. Two pi's go away and you gotta take the inverse. Okay. And yes, this is something that this is something I would memorize. This is something I'd memorize. Or you can memorize the period and be able to get to it. We can, we can derive this. Um, given this, given this part over here, period equals 2 pi square root of L over G. Right? This then becomes an omega that is 2 pi over T. This is 2 pi divided by 2 pi square root of L over G. Yeah? 2 pi's go away. Yes? So now I got. 1 over square root of L over G. Yeah? Let me divide that. Um, let me divide this up. Right? So this is uh, 1 over square root of L divided by square root of G. Yeah? Okay? What does 1 over mean that I need to do? Inverse. Correct. Okay. Inverse. So this becomes uh, square root of G over square root of L. And since that has the exact same thing, right, I, I can recombine and do square root of G divided by L. Okay. Good question. Yes. There's kind of a list of what I did there. Right. If you if you memorize one of them, like if you memorize omega for a pendulum equals square root of g over l, you can work backwards, right? Um, or if you memorize period equals two pi square root of 
um, Kelly or G work that to me. Okay. Um, so just just memorize one of them and be done with it. By the way, you're gonna have to do that with spring all set. Just for did you start recording these? Mm -hmm. okay. Let me start heading soon. Yeah. Good question. Thankfully yes though. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you Look at it and say, okay, this will make it bigger than the one that's on the screen. The only way to know graphs, can I scroll up to the graphs, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm having trouble visualizing what exactly omega is. You have to have two graphs next to each other. Omega takes the graph and scrunches it in or stretches it out. Right? So, like this graph right here, um, omega uh, calls this graph to get scrunched in, right? Because normally the period is. 2 pi, right? And just a regular cosine graph period is going to be 2 pi, right? It's going to go, you know, an entire loop around the circle, so to speak. Okay, 2 pi. Um, and since omega here we calculated was 2, right? Where am I? Like that. Right? We calculated omega to be 2, which we inserted in here, right? Blah, blah, blah. That means everything's getting scrunched. If you will, it's being scrunched by a factor of 2. If it would make it was 0.5, it's going to stretch by after two. Okay. Half being pulled out. Yes. Um, T pi was given, right? Yes. I actually showed you on the graph that here's pi, right? Now you had to figure out where the period was. You had to figure out where the period was. But I could have done this. I could have instead of saying here's pi, I might have left that off completely. And I might have come over here and just put this as Pi over t, right there. Okay. Uh, it could be any number. It could be any number in this period. I like to set it up. I'd be and everyone else. We like to set it up with pi, two pi, and things like that, where it works out. Okay. But then that that two or that pi over there could be three point five seconds. You know, three point five seconds. And whatever you're doing a real life math problem here, it probably is, or you know, from an experiment, it's going to be three point five seconds. There's something random like that, and that's your period, and that goes in for t, and then two pi over that, yada yada yada. Okay. You just don't get your pi. That's okay. It's okay. <coughs> now, back here. Um, did everyone get this little derivation? Because I kind of want to delete it. No. You want me to stop right here? Yeah. Okay. Um, thinking ahead for what we've got to do. I now have an omega, right? I'm looking for what times is this acceleration occurring. Yeah. What times are we finding this acceleration? So just thinking about this, what, what equation do I have with acceleration? A equals negative omega squared. Good. For the finding equation. Now I got a problem. What's my problem, Scott? I got a, I can get omega. I know A, right? So no X. So is X my answer? No. What am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to you know, times that these things are occurring. I mean, let's come back and look at that. At what times, at what times are we going to find, scrolling all the way back up here, at what times will we find the pendulum from the previous question, uh, excuse me, at what times uh, will it have its max acceleration? Okay, at what times will it have its maximum acceleration? Now, already thinking about this, right? That happens at the x knots. Right, but that happens at the farthest in or out. So if we can figure out where it's landing on maximums and minimums, right? It's the time to want. Yes. But if for some reason you have a signal that was being invented by magnet, do you use the force of the magnet and the force of gravity on top of the thing? Yes. So if G is just whatever the force yeah, that, that derivation right there would go out the window and we're blocking another force to it. We'd have to do something else. Um, that's called a driving force. Okay? Having a knife there will be a driving force or a dampening force, depending on what you're doing here with probably a dampening force. And that is 4.3. We'll get to that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, you see where it says A max? 
Yeah, yeah. this what is at x naught. Um, this idea right here is what we are writing down. We're solving for this is what a the maximum acceleration is 3.9, and that's going to occur at the x naught. Right. So what time does this happen at? Now there are two ways to solve this problem. Let me go through it mathematically, and then let, let me go back through it and kind of use a few shortcut ideas just graphically to get this. Okay. Um, a equals negative omega squared x naught. That means a max equals negative omega squared x naught. Yeah? Okay. So now I have these numbers I can solve for x. 3.9 equals negative. Now, omega here is square root of g over f, right? So this is square root of 9.8 divided by my length, 1.3, but then that quantity is squared x naught. That's going to allow me to solve for x naught. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so square root square root gets rid of that. So what is 3.9 times 1.3 divided by 9.8? Go ahead and do that out of route. No, you're going to get it to South Yes, it should come out negative. Wait, why does it come out negative? Negative. Negative what? Negative 0.52. Units, please. Meters. X naught is an amplitude, it's a real measurement of distance, right, or displacement, that is. Um, you put meters going in like propagation units and meters come down. So meters, right? Gravity is an acceleration, that's 9.8 meters per second squared. That 1.3 is a meters, right? So we get out here from all those, the ideas we're getting out meters. Okay. Um, now, I have X naught. That doesn't give me times. How can I get from a position to a time? Uh, it, it wasn't going back and forth, right? What equation with simple harmonic motion do you have that has x in it and t in it? x t equals x naught and we have to decide whether we want to use sine or cosine here. Okay. Uh, what time do the pendulum have its maximum acceleration? I personally like cosine if, it, if there's nothing specified. That's just math. Unless you have that. Yeah, it, it's not going to matter here. X naught. Cosine of x naught. Omega t plus phi. Oh, we, we can talk about this from the velocity angle also. But right now we have x naught, right? Which is also the x position for maximum acceleration. So this becomes, you know, at negative 0.52 equals, here we go again, negative 0.52 cosine of omega is square root of 9.8 divided by 1.3 t. But phi here, there's no phase shift. Uh, we're looking for the times where we have maximum acceleration, right? So this x naught here is the amplitude. But what position am I solving for? The time of the amplitude, right? This becomes x naught equals x naught. I can go ahead and tell you right off the bat. Just thinking here, and we're going to get around to this. This cosine idea has to come out to be cosine has to, of something has to end up equaling what? One. That cosine of whatever has to end up equaling one. So we want that you know, omega t to end up coming out to be one, right? So we've got to pick times where we come out to be one. We're going to get yes. Um, because if this side is x naught, right? And here's an x naught. X naught times 
what equals x naught? One. So this entire thing, cosine omega t plus phi, has to turn out to be one. But, but let's just work out from here. So let, let, let's relax on this. Okay. Um, I've got this equation. Now I'm going to work out. First step: divide both sides by 0.52, right? To, to start to start talking around. So we got negative 0.52 divided by negative 0.52 equals cosine. Um, let's just go ahead. Let's get that square root of 9.8 over 1. Point. Give give me a decimal number there, and we're just going to run with it. 2.7. 2.7. Give me one more sig. 2.75, approximately, right? Um, t. Right? So that's 1 equals the cosine of 2.75t. How do I get at the guts of that cosine? Yeah. Oh, fine. Yes. The phase shift was 0. Fine. If it's not given to you in the problem, yes. You do, do you use the derivative? I don't have to use the derivative here. Good. Inverse cosine, right? I take the inverse. And, and are y'all okay with this, or do I need to show this idea? The inverse cosine. Are we okay with the inverse cosine? I'm sorry? Good. Um, it's the same thing as. And I'm not going to go through the graphs and all that math teacher do that. It, it, it's the opposite. Cosine cancels them out. Right? Um, so kind of the idea behind this is what you do to one side, you do to the other. Okay? What you do to one side, you do to the other. Right? And on the right-hand side, I got the cosine inverse with the cosine. So what happens to those two? Gone. Right? Gone there. Couldn't you just keep in mind that to be cosine of zero is one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're going to get to this, right? So cosine, cosine of, um, I got cosine of inverse of one. What angle gives me one? Now that's what cosine inverse is. It's going back. Cosine of an angle gives you a data point, okay? Specifically, the x data point, okay? Cosine inverse of some x data point gives you an angle, right? So you can plug this into your calculator if you want, but what angle, right? What angle, and specifically here we're talking about radians, right? Do it in degrees and convert your head if you need to, but what angle, right, if you take the cosine of it, gives you 1? 2 pi, right? 2 pi. Or, what else? There, there's actually a bunch. 2 pi. What else? Give you one. Zero. Zero. Right? Zero. What else? Pi will give me negative one. Now, negative one, right? Negative one for that for that angle, if you will. Is that something we're okay with here? Um can I get now Cosine of pi gives me negative 1. My math up here just has 1, right? Um, kind of coming back up and thinking about this, though, I'm looking for, let's come all the way back up, right, to the question. And what times will it have its maximum acceleration? Maximum acceleration. What points does it have its maximum acceleration? Both x naughts. The one that's positive, right? And the one that's negative too. Does that make sense to everyone? The one that's positive and the one that's negative. So the positive versions are zero, two pi, four pi, six pi, dot dot dot. Right? Every time you add two pi, you're just going back around the circle. Yes? Okay. Um, in the negative versions, which we've just got to use our understanding of cosine of the question to figure this out, would be pi, right? 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, 
right? But those would give us the negative versions. Those would give us, if you will, the maximum acceleration is going back in the negative direction. Okay. If this is truly simple harmonic motion, amplitude means the maximum displacement. It will always have the same maximum displacement. One might be negative, one might be positive. One would be to the negative side, technically, and one would be to the positive side. Generally, with amplitude, we take that as taking the absolute value. Is the number you substitute that? It, it doesn't here. Uh, I, I am thinking, just from my understanding, I'm going to go back and do the graph, it'll make this a little bit clearer. Right? Uh, maximum ex the maximum amplitude, if you will, happens at thinking of this pendulum in a circle. Over here at zero, right? But once around the circle is two pi. So one revolution is, you know, there and that, two pi. Base graph, base, base cosine graph. So if this is zero and two pi, what's that side over there? Pi, right? So we have zero, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, and every time I'm at one of the ends, I have maximum acceleration, right? Every time I'm at one of the ends, I have a maximum acceleration. So the negative versions work also for us. And, and whenever I graph this out, this will make it even easier to see. All right, I'm going to pick just two of these numbers, positive and negative salt. All right, so let's pick 0 and pi. All right, so I got pi equals 2.75 t, right? That's going to be t equals um, pi divided by 2.75. Yeah? And also, down here, I said I need to use zero. Zero equals 2.75 t, and so t equals zero. But is it just this, or are there multiple angles that this works for, or multiple times that this works for? There are multiple times, right? Because not only is it zero and pi, right? Here's an answer, and here's an answer. And well, let's go through this. Another answer would be over there at 2 pi. 2 pi equals 2.75 t. t equals 2 pi over 2.75. Yeah? Another possible answer, 3 pi. 3 pi divided by 2.75 equals t. Are you noticing a pattern here yet? The actual answer for the correct time will be n pi divided by 2.75. N standing for n standing for any whole number. N standing for any whole number. What does the 2.75 mean? Can you just kind of graph that? What kind of effect would it have on there? Um, it's going to scrunch this thing. Going to scrunch this thing. Okay. Look, let's go back and let's solve this graph. But those are the answers, right? Our maximum and minimum points should should be on n pi divided by 2.75. Okay. Maximum and minimum points should occur there, right? At zero, it's a maximum. At one pi, it's a minimum. At two pi, it's a maximum. At one pi, it's a minimum. Dividing by that, so everything gets scrunched down to something small. Okay. Um. Let's go back and let's look at this graph. Omega. Square root of g over f. Which means omega was 2.75. Approximately. Right? And I'm just going to graph this out. Um, one of the first things that I need to know uh, might be the amplitude. And we had already solved for that back then, right? What was the amplitude? 
negative 0.52. So in other words, I'm, I'm coming in 0.52 and negative 0.52, right? Those are my amplitudes, right? I got that from A equals negative and negative squared X. Um, what's my period going to be? Well, 2.75 equals 2 pi divided by the period, right? Period T equals 2 pi divided by 2.75. That means this graph looks something like this for the, for the cosine graph. Two pi divided by two point seven five. This would be half of that, right? Half of that, or pi divided by two point seven five. And over here, this would be one and a half of my period, right? Here was the period that I graphed out, or. 3 pi divided by 2.75. Does this make sense? Does this make sense to you? <coughs> getting some blank stairs here. What kind of get this? Okay. This would be one of the more complicated problems that you find at 4.1. Uh, let's come up here and now let's look at the next but that uh, last question. I'm probably going to just pull brand new slide to do it on. At what time does the pendulum from the previous question have an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second? So at what time, at what times would it have an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second? I'm just going to talk you through this. Okay. I'm going to use, let's come down here and look at the graph, 2. Point, what times am I looking for? 2.5. I'm looking for T time when A equals 2.5, right? So what times on this, this is a position time graph, what time does that occur? Well, first step that you're going to want to do here is A equals negative omega squared x, right? I gave you A, 2.5, just for a second. You have solve for omega, right? Square root of g over l. That'll allow you to solve for the position. Position is going to end up coming. Position that it will occur at, right? What so what displacement is going to occur at? Yeah. You can then take that x, substitute into x of t equals x naught cosine omega t. Okay. Solve for times. And there will be multiple again, right? Because cosine by its very nature, by its very nature, is going to have, you know, multiple answers. Cosine of zero is one, cosine of two pi is one, cosine of four pi is one. Cosine of 6 pi is 1, 8 pi, 10 pi, all even number pi. Okay? All have the same answer. Question there to this. Alright. Pull out your homework. Yes. 